Today, we are exploring Vermont, the Green Mountain State. In fact, the name Vermont comes from two French words, ver, which means green, and mons, which means mountain, making the name of Vermont Green Mountain in the French language. The nickname also honors the Green Mountain Boys, an army first created to protect Vermont's land from New York, and later remade to serve in the American Revolution, the Civil War, and the Spanish-American War. I went to a lot of places this year. Disney World, Times Square, the UN Building, Boston, ho a million hotels, Legoland, but my favorite out of all of them was Vermont. We had a lot of fun there. Feel free to use the worksheet that we have created that is aligned with this video, found in the description below. Keep watching to learn about the 45th largest state in our country and to discover our world in a meaningful way. There are a lot of things to do in Vermont year round. Vermont is known for its winter fun, such as skiing and snowboarding. But the most interesting thing we found in exploring and visiting Vermont is that there is fun to be had no matter when you go. We'll highlight skiing later in the video. Let's uh, look at the other seasons. Springtime in Vermont is maple syrup time. The months of March and April are when farmers across the state harvest maple sap, boil it down, and bottle it up in a final product. There are an estimated 3,000 sugar houses in Vermont, many of which will give tours and explain the maple syrup making process. Our family favorite is Glass and View Maple Farm near Shaftesbury in the southwest corner of the state. Stop in if you're ever around that way. I really like going to Vermont in the summer. It isn't really too hot, and it has some cool mountains. I can't wait to go back. A great place to visit in the summer is the town of Manchester, which has more to do near it than you would imagine. A vacation in spot for many in Connecticut and New York, there is tons of shopping that can be done on Main Street, History to See, and it's also close to Bromley Mountain Resort, which in the summer has kid-friendly rides, its highlight being the Alpine Slide, one of the longest slides you will ever see. And one of the places I went, other than the hotels and the maple syrup, was the Alpine Slide. So the Alpine Slide was like a roller coaster. It wasn't part of like all of the other places. A great place to visit in fall is Burlington. Colors of the leaves start to turn in mid-October around Burlington, and you will likely see beautiful fall foliage into early November. Burlington is Vermont's largest city, but it's still small as far as cities go. Other things to do in Burlington include watching a breathtaking Lake Champlain sunset over the Adirondacks, checking out the Church Street Marketplace, a pedestrian-only shopping and dining area, and riding on the Burlington bike path that runs along Lake Champlain. The capital of Vermont is Montpelier, the smallest state capital in America. It's the only state capital without a McDonald's? Both the chicken nuggets and the french fries, I like them. Vermont is a part of New England. Located in the northeast corner of the United States, New England is made up of six United States. Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. It is the oldest region in the United States and one of the first successful English settlements in the Americas. The culture of New England is made up of a shared heritage and culture shaped by its native people, early English colonists, and waves of immigration from around the world. Most of New England's earliest Puritan settlers came from Eastern England, contributing to New England's distinctive accents, foods, and customs. The geography of Vermont is dominated by the Green Mountains. Put a picture of the Green Mountains behind me, which goes north to south in the middle of the state. The Green Mountains separate Lake Champlain to the west and the Connecticut River Valley that defines much of its eastern border. Most of Vermont's land is forested with hardwoods and conifers. Most of its open land is devoted to agriculture such as dairy farming. The state's climate is characterized by warm, humid summers and cold, snowy winters. Vermont is the biggest producer of maple syrup in the USA. In 2022, the state of Vermont produced over 2.5 million gallons of maple syrup, making it by far the top producer of maple syrup in the United States. Whether you go to a large producer or a smaller one, visiting a maple sugar house is a can't-miss event for any family. 
From amazing ice cream to sharp white cheddar cheese, Vermont knows its dairy. The industry generates over $68 million a year in 7,500 jobs. The average dairy farm has about 130 cows, and the state has the highest ratio of cows to human in the country. There is one cow for every 3.8 Vermonters. Vermont's major employment industries are tourism, manufacturing, and agriculture. Although tourism is what Vermont is best known for, manufacturing is the industry that provides the most stable year-round employment. Vermont is one in four states to ever be an independent country. The Vermont Republic was an independent state in New England that existed from January 15, 1777 to March 4th of 1791, when it joined the United States as the 14th state. The Republic was founded when delegates from 28 towns met and declared independence from the land claims of the British colonies of Quebec, New Hampshire, and New York. Vermont was the first place in America to abolish slavery. The Battle of Bennington was fought on the 16th of August in 1777 in what is now Walloomsack, New York. The territory at the time was disputed between New York and Vermont, but it was fought over supplies and troops based in Bennington. The battle was a major strategic success for the American cause and is considered part of the turning point of the Revolutionary War. The victory sparked colonial support for the American Revolution and played a key role in bringing France into the war on the American side. The battle's anniversary is celebrated in the state of Vermont as Bennington Battle Day on August 16th of every year. The battle is commemorated by the Bennington Battle Monument located in Bennington. The monument remains the tallest man-made structure in the state of Vermont. We passed it in the car. I really wish we stopped to see it. I really do. For being the smallest state, it's done very well in national politics. Chester Arthur was the 21st president of the United States. Born in Fairfield, Vermont, President Arthur signed the Pendleton Act, which required government jobs to be distributed based on merit. Calvin Coolidge, the 30th president of the United States, was born in Plymouth Notch, Vermont. He led the nation through most of the Roaring Twenties, a prosperous time in America before the Great Depression. He was president when my great-grandma was born. She's 97 years young, folks. Nicknamed Silent Cal for his quiet nature, Coolidge cleaned up the corruption of the previous Harding administration and provided a model of stability and respectability for the American people in the era of fast-paced modernization. Vermont is also home to Bernie Sanders. A number of famous people in history from Vermont are not often associated with the state. Brigham Young, born in Whittingham, Vermont, is best known as the second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. As leader of his church, Young guided an exodus of thousands of Mormons westward to the Great Salt Lake Valley. Brigham Young founded Salt Lake City and served as the first governor of the Utah Territory. Brigham Young had 57 kids. His wife might, must have had a rough time. Before we knew John Deere as a tractor, there was a man named John Deere who started the company. He was born in Rutland, Vermont in 1804. When the New England economy collapsed in 1836, he left with other Vermonters to Illinois, where he developed the first commercially successful self-scouring steel plow in 1837 and founded the company that still bears his name today. Other famous Vermonters from history and in present times include Piers Anthony, a science fiction writer my dad read as a kid, Ethan Allen, commander of the Green Mountain Boys, the band Fish, George Dewey, the only Navy Admiral in American history, and American singer JoJo. Are you a woodchuck or a flatlander? As of 2014, 51% of Vermont's population was born in the state. That means only half of the people living in Vermont were actually born there, with the rest moving there from other places. With so many people moving into the state, it has created a tension between the two sides. This tension led to the name Woodchuck being applied to those who were from the state and Flatlander applied to the newcomers. Woodchucks also refer to tourists as Flatlanders. Vermont culture has been greatly affected by the famous artists and writers that have called Vermont home. Writing legend Rudyard Kipling called Vermont home from 1893 until 1896 and wrote some of his masterpieces while living in the state. Kipling's works while living in Vermont include Day's work, Captain Courageous, and perhaps his most famous work, The Jungle Book. You can still visit Kipling's Vermont home, Nalaka, near Brattleboro. 
Legendary American poet Robert Frost also spent much of his life in Vermont. In 1920, Frost moved from New Hampshire to Vermont to seek a better place to farm, especially to grow apples. For the next four decades, Frost lived mostly in Vermont, becoming the official poet laureate of the Green Mountain State. Frost wrote much of his verse in a log cabin in Ripton in central Vermont. Vermont is also known for its ice cream, but one company is the most famous, Ben & Jerry's. Starting in a renovated gas station in Burlington, Vermont, Ben & Jerry's has grown to be one of the largest ice cream companies in the world. With its fantastic flavors and innovative names such as Cherry Garcia and Fish Food, Ben & Jerry's sells their ice cream all over the world. Do you believe in monsters? Lake Champlain is the 13th largest lake in the United States and acts as a border between the states of Vermont and New York. The lake was named after French explorer Samuel de Champlain, and some believe there is a lake monster living in its waters nicknamed Champ, much like the famous Loch Ness Monster of Scotland. There have been 300 reporting sightings of the monster, and whether or not it's real, the cultural and money-making opportunities due to the monster is very real. Champ acts as the mascot of Vermont's minor league baseball team, the Vermont Lake Monsters. The Lake Monsters are Vermont's only sports team. Vermont is home to more than 100 covered bridges, boasting more covered bridges per square mile than any other U.S. state. The bridges date from 1820, with most built during the mid and late 19th century. Among them is the Windsor Cornish Covered Bridge that spans the Connecticut River between Windsor, Vermont and Cornish, New Hampshire. At 465 feet, it is the longest two-span covered bridge in the world and the longest wooden bridge in the United States. Nicknamed the Beast of the East, Killington is the largest ski resort east of the Mississippi. Killington also has the largest vertical drop in New England at 3,050 feet. Killington has 213 trails spread across six mountain peaks. It's also known for its snowmobiling tours and snow tubing. That's why they call it the Beast of the East. Stowe Mountain Resort, nicknamed the Ski Capital of the East, is made up of two separate mountains, Mount Mansfield and Spruce Peak. Stowe is renowned for its quaint ski village and its combination of expert ski terrain with fantastic hospitality. There's plenty of challenging terrain to explore and if you go in January, the Stowe Winter Festival is one of the best festivals in the region. When in snow, be sure to visit the nearby Von Trapp Family Lodge, the eventual home of the Von Trapp family made famous by the timeless movie The Sound of Music. These are a few of my favorite things. If Stowe was good enough for the Von Traps, it's good enough for me. The best ski resort for kids is widely believed to be Okino Ski Resort near Ludlow. Parents Magazine rated it the top U.S. family snow resort. With ski programs for the kids and a wide range of terrain make it a great place to go with the whole family. You can find fascinating people, places, and things in all 50 states, and Vermont is no different. What was your favorite thing about Vermont? Do you have it, folks? Vermont. Thanks for watching. Please like and smash the subscribe button.